This episode is sponsored by Stream. Stream provides a level of performance and UX to build scalable in-app chat or activity feeds in days that would take years to build in-house, saving you the time and effort. You can use the chat messaging API to build custom messaging apps with a highly reliable chat infrastructure and feature-rich SDKs. Build your own Slack, Telegram, Twitch or Intercom, really anything with support provided for React, Android, React Native, iOS, Flutter and more. If you are a large scale company, you can make use of the activity feed APIs to grow without worrying about the scalability, maintenance and reliability of complicated news feed infrastructure. Check out the links in the description below to get started today for free. Welcome back to another episode of the Open Source Cafe and I'm super excited for this one because this is a question you folks have asked in the community a lot. Kunal, please share an Android development roadmap. I don't do Android. Like I, uh, I tried it and uh, then I did not get the time. That was the main reason. So that's why I could not like make a video. But today we have Florin over here. Uh, Florin here, over here with us. I believe I pronounced that correctly. And he has some of the best courses on YouTube on Android. And we're going to talk about like how you can get started and roadmap stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, welcome to the channel, Florin, uh, also known as Coding in Flow. Uh, you can check out the links in the description and make sure you give the channel a subscribe. There's some amazing Kotlin resources over there. But how are you doing, man? Uh, would you like, like to tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, first of all, thanks for inviting me. I'm doing fine. I hope you're doing well, too. Yeah, my name is Florian Walter. I have a YouTube channel. I'm a self-taught programmer, but I started pretty late in my life. I started at almost 27. And... I didn't study computer science. I studied business economics. I never really did anything with this degree. So my resume is pretty uh, pretty bad, actually. I don't have the, be uh, the best resume, but my channel is my uh, main focus. This is also what helped me uh, get into the community, uh, teaching myself, getting my name out there, and um, undoing a bit, little bit of the damage I did with my bad uh, resume. <laughs> So um, yeah. yeah, this is uh, what has to say about me. I believe like with uh, with computer science now, it does not really matter which degree you're from after a few years. So can yeah, you tell us a little bit more about, can you tell us a little bit more about what your channel is about and how you started and what's your like motivation and what you're doing over yeah. there? Yeah, my channel is 95% about Android. I focus on Android development for the most part. Um, there's no real reason why when I started learning to code, I just picked something basically. And then I stick with Android because I knew, uh, I knew the name Java of this programming language. I didn't really know what Swift was back then. So this is basically why I went with Android could have been any other topic, but the thing is Android itself is quite a big topic and it's difficult. And this is also why I uh, felt like I didn't really have any uh, time or capacity left to uh, also learn other stuff on the side. I felt like Android alone is enough. So this is why I focused on that. And yeah, for the most part, I made tutorials on my channel, but after like three years or four years of making tutorials, I burned out with that a little bit. And um, at the moment, I don't really feel like making tutorials. So this is why I turned my channel more into a podcast where I interview people. We also had an interview that we recorded uh, before this one here on my channel. So this is what, what I do at the moment. And on the side, I'm working on my own little projects, but I'm actually not working as an employed programmer. I actually do my channel full time and everything that's related to that. That's so awesome. Yeah, that's not really uh, much else to say. No, that's great. And uh, talk more about that, like uh, uh, right now. So let's talk a little bit more about like your experiences and stuff. So. If anyone wants to start in Android in like 2021, what are your thoughts about it? Um, it's a good time to start because there are a lot of things that are kind of newer. So uh, we uh, switched, the, the whole community switched from Java to uh, the newer, uh, more modern language Kotlin a while ago. So uh, this is kind of, it's kind of, has been kind of a change and also, the whole UI framework on Android recently has changed from XML layouts to a Jetpack Compose. So I think at the moment with all this new stuff, it's a really good time 
to start learning Android because it's it feels very modern now in comparison to like two or three years ago. And a lot of people have to learn a lot of stuff from scratch again. So I feel like even as a beginner, it's easier to uh, stay competitive with other programmers right now. So yeah, I think it's a good time to start. There are a lot of resources out there, a lot of free resources. So you just need an interest in this topic and then you can go for it. Now, I'm always advocating for learning in public for developers. And that's why I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Showcase. Showcase is a network built for developers to connect, build communities and find new job opportunities. So I was able to create my Showcase profile in a matter of few minutes. And it's a really amazing front page for the tech community. So here you can see information about me, all the social links about myself, the tech stack that I'm familiar with. And I really enjoy how it categorizes it accordingly. You can also see the positions I'm working on and uh, the credentials. So I had fun speaking at KubeCon and Open Source Summit. You can verify the credentials over here. You can see the repositories that I'm currently active with. You can also check out the platform in dark mode by pressing the display toggle button. They can find communities like JavaScript, blogging as a developer and React, and they can use their profiles to gain access to new job opportunities. For content creators, you can make money on Showcase by turning on member subscriptions and putting your content behind the paywall. You can use the invite code join Kunal and check out the links in the description to get started today. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit more about that. Like obviously, you know, Android, you know, it's a widely used platform. And uh, we're talking about when you when you mention about resources. Before that, let's talk about the various like tech stacks, right? So you mentioned about Java and or Kotlin. So what are like the major advantages of using Kotlin over Java? Yeah, Kotlin is often called a more modern version of Java. They just learned from these 20 years of experience that Java was around. What's What are the annoying parts about it? Uh, mostly because Java is very robust. And in Kotlin, you can often write the same stuff with much fewer lines of code. It's often more readable. We also have coroutines to handle multi-threading, which makes it easy in my opinion. Of course, it has a, its own problems, but it's easier than how it was in the past. And yeah, there are not so many different things you have to learn on Android. It's not like web development where there are a ton of different frameworks and languages and stuff you can use. On Android, it's basically just learn, learn Kotlin mm. and learn how the Android framework works. And that's basically it. And what were like the, let's talk a little bit more about the resources. So what were the resources that you used when you were like learning Android and how do you learn a new topic, for example, right? Yeah. Uh, if you're gonna start with something new, you're learning. And, because as a developer, the learning never stops. So what are some of the tips you'd like to give in terms of when, you, when it comes to learning Android? Yeah, I started to learn with some beginner tutorial by Google, I think, back then on Udacity, which is also a course website. I think they are still on there. And Google themselves, they have some beginner courses that are free. And I think they're actually enough. But after I finished a beginner course, I, uh, I personally just Google the stuff I want to learn. I don't have a specific source I go to. Uh, I don't have a specific course I followed besides these beginner courses. And even though I create videos myself. And I know that many people like learning from videos. I myself actually prefer learning from text and Stack Overflow answers. And yeah, I'm the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's very common for people who create videos that they often don't really like learning from videos themselves for whatever reason. But whenever I want to learn something, you are just type it into Google and try to uh, apply it to some own project. And that's basically it. And I'm also a fan of, um, learning by building your own little projects that personally interest you like an app you can you can try to build an app that is useful for yourself or useful for your family or maybe even something you want to put on the play store just because i think this is the best way to stay motivated while learning because it it's more fun to build on something that interests you but regarding resources just type whatever you want to learn into google and you will find more than enough yeah most definitely 
Awesome. And I really love your point about learn by doing. This is what I've been telling in like the community as well. So don't be stuck in like the tutorial hell. Just don't keep watching tutorials, but also yes. apply it uh, in, in, a, in a lot of places. All the resources being mentioned, I'll link those in the description and make sure you check out the Coding Inflow channel uh, as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the other you know tech technologies that are coming out. Like people talk about like Flutter and like React Native and stuff. Uh, so what are your thoughts about this? Yeah, I get often asked about Flutter specifically and on my opinion about that. But the truth is I don't really have an opinion because I haven't tried it out. I focus on Android uh, all the time, basically. Um, I know that some people really love Flutter. I know that there are some developers which I regard highly that are not fans of Flutter, that don't like it. But again, this is not my own opinion. This is just what I hear from others. What I personally found more interesting than Flutter or React Native at the moment is Cotton multi-platform where you uh, where you share code between iOS and Android, but you basically uh, write the UI specific code um, individually for each platform. So this is also a way to share code. And I think it combines the best of both worlds because yeah, you can share code. You don't have to write everything twice, but at the same time, you stay close to the metal on each platform because you still have to write this platform specific code. So in Android and iOS, if you need Bluetooth or whatever, I think it's difficult to do on Flutter because you need these plugins. But again, I'm not sure how this works, but on a Kotlin multi-platform, you just write the platform specific code for this particular platform. And then you can use all the features that, that this platform provides. So for me, this seems like a more interesting and a more future-proof um, framework to uh, yeah, get both an iOS yeah. and an Android app. Yep. And I think Kotlin yeah. multi-platform uh, is also also works on the web. So it's not only mm -hmm. mobile. Yeah. I believe like if you if you already know how to code in one language or framework, you can definitely pick up the others and see if yeah. it's actually going to work for you. So That's what are true. your thoughts on this? Like uh, when we talk about trying out different things and then seeing what works for you, like do, do you believe in that as well? Yeah. Um... As I said, I personally focused a lot on Android, but this oh. is also because I uh, have this channel and I always felt like I really, really need to know what I'm talking about before I can make these mm. tutorials. This is why I had this really narrow view. But I think there is nothing against trying out different stuff. And I think it's also a better way to stay motivated with coding by trying out different stuff and not focusing oh. too much on one platform. But on the other hand, it's also not good, I think, to jump around too much because then you never mm. really get good at something. So uh, try out different stuff, but also try to get good at something specific, yeah. some specific platform that you like. I think that makes the most sense. Yeah, to totally agree with that. Um, all right. And when you're talking about like, okay, you're learning, uh, when, when we talk about learning resources, you shared you know, quite some. Um, one question I often get is like, can you directly start with Kotlin without knowing Java? Yeah, absolutely, you can. This is a very common question, but you don't need to mm. start with Java at all. You only need to learn Java if you have to work on some legacy mm. project. But uh, the languages are similar enough that it shouldn't be difficult learning the other one, no matter which one you learn first. So uh, you can start with Kotlin right away. And the thing is, Kotlin is also at the moment easier to use because all these newer uh, libraries that Google comes out with, they are optimized for Kotlin. So you have an oh. easier time writing Kotlin than Java because it's all optimized for Kotlin now. I see. Awesome. And one last thing is now uh, you're learning about the resources, you're getting started with your own applications. But what about when we're talking about like production, regi code, when we're talking about scaling an application and actually working at a company and stuff. So w what all things, what all other things can people like look into after they have like crossed the beginner, like the beginners, beginner phase of learning Android? Yeah. First of all, I want to mention that I, uh don't have much experience working on real big applications. I freelance a little bit, for the, but for the most part, I focused on my channel. And I don't want to pretend that I'm very experienced when I'm actually not. So I'm more of a big, I, my content focus is more on beginners and maybe, maybe intermediate programmers. But um, yeah, testing is something you should get your hands on. This is something people, including me, often ignore when they start out with uh, learning to code that they don't care about testing. But as we already mentioned before, um, working on your own app is a good way to stay motivated. And it also kind of forces you to get into these more advanced topics like testing. 
because your app is actually on the Play Store. I mean, if you put it on the Play Store, then you have to write tests for it to make sure it doesn't break when you update it. So this is, my, in my opinion, a nice way to kind of nudge you into this direction of getting into these topics that you would otherwise maybe ignore if you just work on your local projects that you never put out in the world. And yeah, then I would say just learn whatever comes with working on bigger projects. I mean, you will, in architecture, for example, architecture is something you have to learn when you when your projects get bigger. On Android, MVVM is very popular or MVI. And this is also something you can ignore as long as your app is small. But as soon as it gets bigger, you should understand how this stuff works. Yeah, multi-threading with coroutines, reactive programming. Those are the kind of topics you should learn, I think. Yeah, I don't know so much about security and how to approach this part, but I think this is more important if you work on like banking applications. Yeah. Stuff like yeah. that. One thing I would like to point out over here is you can definitely check out some Android open source projects as well. That will give yeah. you a really nice uh, understanding and some nice experience. So um, I'm going to, I've done a video with Florin uh, on his channel about it uh, and how you can find projects in open source specific, uh, like domain specific projects. So make sure you check it out. And yeah, awesome. Just one last question I have for you is what is, uh, what is next for your channel? Like what are yeah. the future plans? Yeah. Yeah. For now, I want to focus on making these podcast interviews because they are a nice change for me. They are more fun than making tutorials oh. all the time. But I know that my, my followers prefer tutorials. They want me to make oh. tutorials. But I mean, if it's not fun for me, then I just can't do it for years on end tutorial after tutorial oh. after why well, this becomes boring but in these and these podcast interviews are also a nice way to uh, start getting into different topics because i don't oh. only want to stay with android all the time so yeah. yeah podcast this is the main stuff awesome. i'm going to do on my channel yeah i've seen some amazing ones done uh, you know already um uh, so make sure you check Thanks. out the links in the description and check it out um make sure you subscribe and uh, hopefully you'll you know learn something new thanks a lot for joining florian it was really awesome speaking with you and yeah. thanks uh, for yeah, having me really appreciate it bye, bye.